Hello and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today we want to look at this. Now I know I've done lanterns before, but I needed to make some for a commission um, for a party and I thought I would film making it to give some more ideas of another kind of idea you could create a landscape in a lantern. So today I'm going to show you how to make this. So I've created this stencil for this piece and I'm making sure it's lining up all right. Now I'm going to start with each, um, with each layer that I need. So I'm going to put that back where it was um, and slowly fill them up. So we have, to start with, we have the sky. I just don't want so much, too much sky. So we'll just do it like this. Um, sky, I'm using, I use a lot of colours, guys. I don't tend to use just... Um, one colour uh, I build up with lots, so I'm starting off with a light sky blue this time. A light sky blue is transparent, so I'm going to need a good layer of it to get some colour saturation. As you see, I've got all four panels attached to each other so I can just go across them and it ends up as one kind of landscape piece going around the lantern. Um, so I've already done one before. I'm doing, making four of these. I'm going to choose some periwinkle. Um, that's going to go at the top. Um, and the sky, and then I'm going to use some light cyan. Good, really good to give these up to while I'm wearing a mask or tap to make sure I'm clearing out any residue in between. Um, and I'll just put some light cyan along the horizon. Just as a sort of... Rather blue. Now, if I want a sort of more moody sky, I tend to put some darker in. But on these, I don't particularly want a moody sky. I want it nice and, and light. Right, I've done that. Now I remove this and I'm just discarding these powders because and then that one will comes off and this one goes on like so. And then I'm gonna start building up this layer. Now this layer I'm using some spring green, um, the opal. Just making sure my Stencils are nicely lining up. Now spring green will react with some of the blues I'm using, but I don't mind if I get a little bit of a brown line along the horizon. I think it actually quite works quite well, that. Um, so it's not an effect I mind. And also you're only tack fusing, so you're never gonna get too much of a line. So that's my spring green. I'm gonna add a bit of pea pod. I've got what I call my magic brown. It's coming out quite green, but I quite like it in landscapes. So I'm just going to add, I'm not putting it everywhere, just a bit here and there to add some other colour and then just a little bit of aventurine because it's quite dark aventurine, so it adds a nice low light. Now I've managed to mess that up royally, so I'm just going to. I'm not going to make so much of an issue, but get a bit of this splodge it, for want of a better word, across. And some random splodges. So then I can take this piece off. And put this piece back on. Now I've got a pretty horrible line going on there. So, ha uh ha. -huh. I will try and 
work it back together and afterwards. Um, now I'm doing the blue sea. Um, I'm going to start with some uh, Egyptian blue. There's a sort of base layer. It's a really wonderful blue, Egyptian blue. Now I've definitely got some green all over the place in this. I should have probably wiped it off in the areas I could. But hopefully it won't mess it up too much. I am going to be adding stuff after I've done the powders and tack fuse. Some stuff on top. I'm going to say something that will have to be cut out. So I'm going to talk to the drivers and see where they come from and so see whether we want to try and get hold of the agency. The agency. Mm -hmm. Next, I'm going to put some light turquoise in the kind of shallower part of the sea. Then I just want to put some deep royal blue in where the deeper water is, but I'm not putting very much in my sieve because I just, I don't want a lot. So I'm just... Okay. So that's that one done. So now I'm going to take this off. This back on, make sure it lines up nicely. Now I'm going to use, I am going to use cream here because if I use French vanilla, there would be quite a strong reaction. So I'm just going to put some cream down. French vanilla would react with the turquoise I put in, the light turquoise I put in the sea. So if I use cream, it won't. I just want to sort of... Nice and I'm gonna use a little bit of light peach cream just to add a bit of pinkish tinge. Mostly to sort of the center bit here. And then I'm going to add some green. Starting again with my sp spring green. I'm going over the cream to add a layer of green. It's the area where my flowers are going to be growing out of. I'm going to use a bit of pea pod again. And then a bit of light green transparent, slightly different tone. It's a nice colour. So then I need to take everything off. Now, I've got some areas here where it's not quite joining up, but I can just dab it with my finger to get it back in place. And then I'm going to just use a little piece of paper here to create some C effect. So I'm just going across here like this, and then when it gets a bit narrow, I can use this end of the paper. And again, I'm going to use my finger where I've gone over and I didn't want C effect, which I've created by mistake.
and then it's sort of ready to go in the kiln and we'll tack fuse it and when we can add some details to it after that. So these came out of the kiln. I really like the, um, the, the, the um, powder on the work on it. I think it works really well. We've added some um, small boats already. We sort of started adding things and then went, oh, we've gone to film. So yeah, adding small boats. These are just sort of, you know, shapes of glass um, that work well. And then the boat hulls. And we've added some kind of little buildings on the, um, the, the hillside opposite and just enameled um, some windows and doors on those. So I'm now going to add, um, I want to add some seagulls and I'm going to add some flowers coming up here and some hot air balloons in the sky and maybe even a few sheep and um, we can have a look when they're ready to go in the kiln. the kiln and all the frames in the lanterns not frames piece of panels in the lanterns um, I think they look great I think they work really well together as a collection I think the nice thing about this is they're gonna look lovely during the day because it's a, a daytime into evening event and during the day they'll have these pretty kind of pictures on them and then in the evening the light will come in because we'll have the candles inside them and it will look really pretty with the light coming through the um, lanterns as well so it works for both and I hope this has inspired you and given you an idea about how to make a landscape themed lantern of your own you've got some great products on there we've got the reed heads really loved how those brought this piece together and um, those are on our website tabithasglassemporium.com you can find our seagulls and our hot air balloon our flowers all available on the website there so go and check that out you can also sign up for our newsletter there and there you hear about all new fantastic products and any kind of sale events or any other things that we have going on. So sign up for that and you get all our news first. And until next time, happy fusing. <laughs>